I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for an expedition. The freshly refreshed 2022 Ford Expedition. Limited stealth edition, no brake boost because I just finished knee surgery. A little slow off the line, but once it gets going, pretty good pickup. Horsepower and torque. 440 horsepower, 510 pound-feet of torque from a 3.5 liter high output EcoBoost V6, which is optional in this vehicle. Just like a new Raptor. This is the high output version, just like you'd find in the new Raptor with 10 less horsepower in this. So you could probably make this thing sound like a trombone. Yeah, but here's the thing. It already sounds like something. So I'm in sport mode. Listen to this. You hear this whistling all the time? Yeah, it's subtle, but all you can the definitely time. notice it. Yeah, so it kind of sounds like AC is being compressed or something. Like it doesn't really sound like turbo. I don't that... know if I enjoy it that much. And before we keep going, starting today, May 26, it's Sirius XM's free listening period. So from now until June 6, if you have a Sirius XM button in your car, if your car is enabled for Sirius XM, it will work. So go check it out and let us know what your favorite channel is for this free listening period. And if you like the free listening period and you want three more months of free listening, use our links in the description. SiriusXM.ca or .com slash the straight pipes. So now's a good time to send it through Cliche Corner. However, I can't really send it too hard because of my knee. So it turns out you need to brace yourself. Uh, I didn't really realize that. So yeah, I mean, it handles all right. I'm not it's pushing not it too hard. It's not or I'm, yelling or anything. Exactly. And I'm like, I'm driving this at a pace for like, I'm late for soccer practice for my kids kind of thing. Or you're an undercover cop and you're about to hit someone with your blinkers and hit them with a the pit maneuver. Yes, because that's kind of what this car, truck, sorry, truck looks like. Do you want to get to the looks? It is refreshed and all black. And the first thing I noticed is these wheels. Yeah, the wheels kind of, to me, look like Mustang bullet wheels with an extra spoke and no actual lip. Kind of looks like an like old uh, Porsche Panamera to me. Okay, I, I do like them. And then you also get red brake calipers because we do have the Stealth Performance Edition because you can get the Stealth without the red calipers, but then you don't get the engine. You think Stealth is going to be the new ST where they spread that out to all the other cars? Like you're going to be able to get a Ford Raptor Stealth? I don't know. I don't think so. Ford Mustang Stealth? Maybe. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's cool. So we're already on a great pair of General Tires, which is a company owned by Continental. But what would be the Continental recommended tire for an expedition? The Cross Contact LX25, or if you want to go slightly more off-road, the Terrain Contact HT. And then from the side, the only silver chrome we get really is this line that goes across the, what's this called? The, uh, uh I forget. The, There's uh, a word for it, but it uh, looks cool. The, it's not the shoulder, it's the... There's a, there's a word for it. There is. Let us know in the comments below. What's this called? Beltline. 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 We remembered. We, we, we know the word, we just can't remember right now. It looks nice though. Yeah, it does look really good. There's just enough chrome on here, but um, it's kind of weird that they do still have chrome on a Stealth Edition. I mean, you gotta have a little bit. No, you don't. I think so. Mercedes doesn't. Whatever. This it's, isn't a this Mercedes. Is, this is Ford. This is for Americans. Yes. They're gonna think you're ripping them off if you don't give them at least a little bit of chrome. <laughs> I wonder if Chevy would have chrome on the equivalent version of like, for sure. Tahoe or something. For sure. Okay, front end, it's all blacked out and we've got really cool headlights. Everything up at the front looks awesome, no complaints. No, it, the headlights look great. The refresh, I think, did a fantastic job. And there is even a Timberline edition now, which is a very off-roady version of this, which actually gets slightly more raptorized stuff, like tow hooks. But anyways, this one looks good. And from the back, taillights look different. Everything about it looks fun. And the exhaust tip is real. It's not that weird explorer stuff that looks awful, but does it sound good from the... Outside, let's find out. Uh, not really. Yeah. Doesn't whatever. sound good from the inside. It just sounds like whistling. Exactly. That's all you hear. Like, it, it honestly sounds like the AC compressor or something. Also, uh, I'm not sure if this is related to the latest recall because... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah! <laughs> there's a recall of several hundred thousand uh, Ford vehicles for catching fire uh, expeditions and navigators. Like parked off in driveways? Yeah. Just, so, like, uh, just like electric cars. Yeah. They're so, all, uh, it's, everything's bad across the board. Good news is this one has not caught on fire for us yet. So there's that. Yeah, but if it does catch on fire, which would be cool, we will show that on video. Apparently it only applies to 2020 and 2021 vehicles. Ah, darn, so close, apparently. 
And this one has the optional sport tuned suspension. I kind of expected it to be bad because the Explorer ST had really stiff suspension. This one's totally fine. Yeah, it doesn't feel bad at all. I think it is apparently adaptive, but I haven't noticed the difference between any of the drive modes because we have several optional packages on here. We have like an ELSD so we can lock that rear uh, diff. And uh, we have a bunch of stuff with the towing package as well because if you buy one of these, probably tow a hell of a lot and this can tow a hell of a lot at 9300 pounds yeah this is secretly just a cool looking minivan that can off-road because there's so much room in all three rows for adults which is fantastic yeah i'm not going to squeeze myself uh, in any of the rows because of my knee but showing yuri in here it actually looks pretty comfortable and, back there and there is a max edition too or max version which expedition will, max yeah 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 which will give you more room in the trunk space because right now with all three rows up you can just like barely fit a couple carry-ons there right and then we also also, speaking about the interior, we have an optional large screen, which is basically lifted straight from the Mach-E. And the F-150 gauge cluster. Yes, and I'm gonna tell you right now that you do not have to option the screen, and we would both not option the screen for several reasons. Yeah, uh, I hate this infotainment. I didn't like it in the Mach-E. It's uh, bad, slow, laggy, not intuitive. And the gauge cluster, it's nice that it's digital and it looks really cool, but like I don't need to see my RPM in 1.8 1 <laughs> 1 or whatever. So yeah. um, I much prefer the old. I was thinking, even thinking recently how much I like the older infotainment in something recent that we drove. I forget what it was, but. Yeah, no, it's good that you don't have to get this one. So I suggest just saving that 850 bucks or whatever it is and just getting that. The only thing is I do like these digital gauges and they are tied to the infotainment. So. What's, what's cool about the uh, gauge cluster is that when you change your modes, it now shows everything spinning around, but with an Expedition instead of an F-150. Yes, and we have several drive modes, uh, like a lot of them. And then I noticed that the drive mode thing actually goes the wrong way. So if I want to go to the right, it goes left. Ford be Ford. I don't know. Just, just drive, Yuri. You're already halfway out of the car. I want you to slam each gear manually. How? M, go. Oh my god. <laughs> go! <laughs> and it was laggy to it. This is like, you know when you go to like an arcade and it's got like the worst controls ever for like dropping the balls into the thing? Like this is that. Yeah, so uh, it's a gear limiter. That's why it didn't oh. upshift every single time. So right now I can downshift you and it eventually should downshift you. Okay, hang on. As a gear limiter, it's fine. I thought this was there like we go. a it paddle has feature. Yeah, no, it's it's kind of hilarious though, right? Like slam, slam, slam. Yeah, but definitely good power, like flooring it up a hill and. Oh, you put me in a gear limiter still. <laughs> Get me out of this. Yeah, lots of torque. And it's a 10-speed auto, the same one that you find in the F-150 in the Tremor that we drove. This one doesn't have that downshift lag, which I is did, interesting. I, did not. I am in sport mode, though. It, yeah, but even in normal, I haven't found it to be as bad as the Tremor. Oh, I'm good with it. All right, through cliche corner. And we're in uh, two high, which is rear-wheel drive. If I was a cop, like I look like driving this car. Cops should definitely option this high output version. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't that catch was, anyone, but like, whatever. That was decent. I heard the back end sliding around there. <laughs> <laughs> we also have four auto and then four low. So uh, this got a two-speed transfer case. And this does have really good radar cruise lane keep, which we like. Yeah, it doesn't have blue cruise, which is good that this doesn't have blue cruise. And I did follow up with Ford, and we still have no idea how to make blue cruise work. If it did work, didn't work. Nobody's given us a demo. Yeah, we're waiting. Ford, give us a demo. We would love to see how Blue Cruise is supposed to work. Yes, because shout out to Cadillac, because they gave us that Escalade with uh, Super, Super Cruise. Cruise that, so we can, that, that was working. Yes, so it could finally, we could test it after years. Blue Cruise does not exist as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> we, we tried. And with that heavy duty tow package, we also have pro trailer backup. So if you don't know how to back up, you just use this knob and you just kind of twist the knob, tell it where you want the, the trailer to go. Okay, next thing, this infotainment, things I don't like about it. It's laggy, there's no hard buttons. If I want to go to my hard buttons, I have to swipe down for shortcuts. And like sometimes, okay, some obviously now on camera, when I click it, it works fine. But sometimes, man, it's like not good. Yeah, and then we have uh, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You can do wireless or wired. And I found that your position on the nav on Google Maps on an iPhone is blocked by the bottom bar of Apple CarPlay, which is really weird. 
Yeah. Everything even I, even if you do the recenter thing, it still blocks you. Everything about this is just like bad. Just like BMW, they get rid of their like favorite hard button thing and then just make screens with swipes. Everything kind of sucks and it's, it's sad we're going that direction, but you can get the old infotainment, so that's good. Yeah, and then your climate controls, I did also find that to be laggy sometimes. Again, when we're recording on video, it seems to be fine. So it's probably from like a cold start that it's, you know, it, the, the chips need to warm up. <laughs> Anyways, we have we have heated and cooled seats, which is really nice because honestly, I'm kind of hot right now, so. The best part is we have Sirius XM and it's free right now. That's right. <laughs> and if you're shopping for one of these, tsp.truecar.com, discounted price offers. And generally, this interior is actually quite nice. It's basically an F-150. Yes, it's body on frame, that's not interior. But in here, this kind of looks, this pattern up here looks really cool. It's very interesting. It kind of looks like forged carbon, doesn't it? It looks like 2020s art. Hang on, this is actually forged carbon because forged means fake. <laughs> it just it looks like like modern art to me like when you go to like hipster kind of stuff like yeah. that's I don't know I don't know it looks good though I, I don't mind it this like, is way better than gloss black yeah yeah it's great and then unlike the Ford F-150 we don't have an armrest that flips all the way down which I thought would be really nice to have and we don't have AC power right here we just have the 12 volt but we have AC power back here and a bunch of cup holders everywhere does it fit a small cup Yes, it does, of an ice cap. And the reason that this doesn't fold, I imagine is there's no real reason for it because we don't have a shifter, we have this circle shifter. But I like to have my thing so I can work on my computer. Well, this isn't a business truck here. It just opens up and it, it like, it's good for putting a lot of food in there, a lot of takeout. Exactly, it's a family truck. I guess that would be good for picnics. That's what I'm saying, I, yeah. I still would like it. <laughs> okay, we have a B&O sound system. Sounds good, lots of bass. I yeah. like to listen to my Sirius XM channel 44. Yeah. And then the visors. Uh, these are gonna pass for sure. They always do, right? Three, yep. two, one. Good job. And then how about seat comfort? Very good. Like I could road trip this thing for weeks on end. My armrest position is great. Look, both elbows while I'm touching the wheel. Fantastic. Combined with the cruise control would be unreal. And I love this red stitching. Yeah, it looks great. Very here. stealth. Yeah. They cool. should make it red blue for police edition. <laughs> for, uh, oh, you can't buy a Crown Victoria anymore? Well, you can pretend to be a cop with this. So I feel like that's pretty much everything about this expedition. I think we both really like it and would much rather have the older infotainment, but we're stoked that we don't have blue cruise in here. It drives great. The power is great. Lots of room in every seat. We have free Sirius XM right now until June 6th. I think it's time we get to the price. Well, the expedition starts at $68,840. Canadian. And this one is not even fully loaded and it's $90,549. Holy shit. Holy tamale! Yeah, I mean, whatever. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a tamale. It's I feel a tamale. Like, I feel like this is like borderline luxury, you know what I mean? Like, it is. This is like cooler than a Lincoln would be. Yeah, and a Lincoln would be even more expensive than this, and a Tahoe would be equivalent to this, and a Tahoe is pretty expensive. Yeah, dude, car prices are crazy. What are you gonna do? Yeah, you what are you gonna, you're just gonna order this and then maybe get it in a year anyways. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, let us know what you think of this. I like it a lot. I would highly recommend ordering one if you can, or just getting one in stock at tsp.truecar.com. And go to your car, push the some button, listen to some free radio right now. <laughs>